What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to be doing another video and today I'm going to be using Haverford by Sterling. I'm going to be using my Mule R106 with a uh, Vossod blade. I'm going to be using my uh, two band uh, synthetic by Sterling. And again, I'll be using it because I need to get rid of it. Gentleman John, he's got crushed up. Gentleman John, let me get my face wet. So how's everyone doing today? It is the 2nd of February, 2024. So how's everyone doing though? I hope good. Today, uh, you know, sometimes I do uh, history stuff for you guys. I love history, so. Uh, today in music history, I'll talk to you guys about that today. Uh, today in music history, uh, was the date February 2nd, 1959 that uh, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, Big Bopper, uh, Big um, uh, Richie ba uh, Richie Valens, Big Bopper, and uh, Buddy Holly all last performed. They performed in Clear Lake, Iowa, at the surf ballroom. And how that story started was uh, the winter dance party started about a week, a week, week and a half prior before this event, they kept crisscrossing the United States, you know, Duluth, Minnesota to like, uh, like, I think from like Duluth to, I want to say like Charlotte, North Carolina or something like that. And they had this old bus. It was an old an old school bus that they used. And so you had all these big rock and roll stars from that era, from the 1950s. You had, like I said, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, who was just starting, the Big Bopper. You had Dion and the Belmonts. Uh, and with With Buddy Holly, he didn't have his original band with him because they didn't want to go out on the road with him. So he had uh, first pass. He got a couple of new guys to go along with them. Uh, one would be. Uh, uh, Jerry Alsop, uh, and the other one would be uh, country music legend icon, the late great Waylon Jennings. Waylon actually started as a disc jockey in uh, in uh, Lubbock, Texas, where Buddy's from. So, uh, so he called up uh, Waylon and said, "Hey." Do you want to come on tour with me? The my regular guys don't want to come. He's like, sure, whatever, you know. And so they kept they were on a bus going cross country on this bus. The bus would always break down. This is the story I I keep reading and I keep hearing. The bus would always break down, like. At night, in the cold, you know, it'd be snowing and blah, blah, blah. Like, 
it got to the point where, uh, oh, if you hear noise, that's my daughter. I don't know what she's doing. Uh, but the, uh, their bus kept breaking down every 500 miles or wherever. And so they finally wrote, roll into Clear Lake to do a performance at uh, uh, the Surf Ballroom, which is still around actually. It's, an, it's actually a, uh, it's a landmark now. It's on that historical landmark. And that's one place I actually want to go visit for my other channel. But they get to the surf ballroom. Buddy Holly, who was 22 years old at the time of all this happening, very bright young man, you know, very, very bright, uh, goes on, searches for the owner of the surf ballroom. A guy named uh, Carl Anderson, or Carol Anderson, sorry, Carol Anderson, uh, and asks him, hey, can I, uh, how do I get in contact to get a, uh, to get a, uh, a flight out of here tonight for me and my bandmates because at that point he was expressing his concern about uh, driving in the uh, school bus with all the other guys. Not because he didn't want to, it was because it was just so cold the bus would break down and they would literally, they would, uh, I guess they would burn books in in the middle of the, uh, of the, uh, pathway of the bus just to stay warm. So, he calls Dwyer, uh, Mr. Anderson calls Dwyer Airport and gets in contact with Mr. Dwyer, who is the owner of Dwyer Airport. And so, they reach a pilot who is, whose name is uh, Roger Peterson. Uh, and all this, what I'm telling you, is online. You can all look it up if you want to. Uh, I think this is second pass, I believe. Yeah, second pass. Uh, well, the, uh, They get a airplane, a beach bonanza. So it's a very small plane. But so they they get it ready for him, you know, and like uh him and his bandmates. They're all at the surf ballroom doing their gigs, you know. Dion and the Belmonts and Buddy and Richie and Big Bopper and I believe uh I believe uh uh Carl Perkins was there and or it was or it was um uh, uh was it Jerry Lewis? It was someone. Another famous rock and roller was there. It wasn't like Elvis Presley or whatever, but it was someone. Uh, but they get done, and so Buddy's raring to go, you know. So what happened is, uh, Big Bopper, uh, 
who was a former disc jockey himself, uh, sought out, uh, heard actually, uh, that Buddy had a, uh, rented a plane to get them to the next destination. And so he, uh, phones Waylon Jennings and says, look, I'm very sick. I want to go. I want to go and uh, go to a hotel and rest. Do you care if I uh, if I uh, uh, take your place? And he's like, if it's all right. Well, this is what uh, this is what Leland James said to him. Cause I watched uh, videos of. Wayland saying this. He said, if it's all right with me, if it's all right with Buddy, it's all right with me, and I don't care, you know. If you're sick, just go on and take the place, because if you're sick, you know. Well, Buddy Holly caught wind of it, you see, and Buddy, him and Wayland were friends way before Buddy became uh, famous. Since they since they lived uh, in the same area and were friends and whatnot. So, Buddy jokingly said, to Waylon, he says, let me, let me just wait a little bit. Buddy jokingly says to Waylon, "I hear, uh, I hear you're not coming on the, uh, hear you're not coming on the uh, plane tonight." And Waylon's like, "No, I, I decided to give it to to Bopper because he's sick, and uh, I guess uh, Buddy was like leaning up on a chair, leaning back on a chair, and like." And said, looks at Waylon and says, well, you know, Waylon, I hope your uh, bus freezes up tonight, you know, because that's joking, like, you know, just joking. And Waylon, without knowing anything, uh, jokingly says, jokingly, you know, well, I hope your, I hope your damn plane crashes, you know, J joking, you know. In about 45 minutes after saying that, uh, that's what happened. But with Richie, how he got his spot on the plane was Tommy Olsip, uh, like him and Tommy. Tommy and uh, uh, Richie, I mean, flipped a coin and said, uh, Tails, you go on the bus. Heads, Richie, you go on the bus and blah, blah, blah. And, or was it the vice versa? I can't remember who had Tails, who had Heads. But whatever Richie had, it landed on that. So he got on the plane. You know, so and what happened was as soon as Mr. Anderson dropped them off at the at the airport there, at Dwyer Airport in uh, Sioux City, I think it's Sioux City, uh, uh, Iowa, or no, sorry, Mason City, Iowa, sorry, uh, Lake. As soon as they took off, they're like, they literally just took off. And here come a snowstorm. And what happened was, uh, it was snowing so bad that the pilot, Roger Peterson, couldn't figure out where he was. And this was only like 15 minutes into the flight. And so, 
he thought he was up in the air. Well, he wasn't. So what happened was when they hit, they hit so hard that it killed all of them instantly. Like, like to the point where, now this part's going to be a little bit graphic when I tell you, like, uh, all of, like, Richie Valens, Big Bopper, and, and, uh, Buddy Holly, they were all out of the plane. Like, literally, they were scattered all over the plane. Not their, not their whole entire bodies, but, like, they're, not like pieces of their bodies, but their whole entire body was just scattered. Like one was like over the fence, one was like near the plane, one was like uh, across the plane. Like if the plane's here, they were here, you know? And the pilot, uh, the pilot actually, I'm gonna do a fourth pass. The pilot actually was still strapped into the plane well that's day like all the other guys finally get to their destination they're like uh Waylon he was all like he goes to the hotel like yeah put me where uh put me to where uh Buddy Holly is gonna be uh sleeping you know blah 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 and uh uh, the desk clerk person was all like, you didn't hear. He's like, hear what? They're like, them boys got killed last night in a plane crash in Iowa. And, and with all that, everything transpired. Like, and I feel so bad for everyone involved because back then, it was by mouth. So, like, Buddy Holly's brother, Travis, actually heard from his wife and said, hey, you better go put your uh, Sunday clothes on because uh, there's a report that Buddy Holly, or that Buddy, uh, got killed last night in a plane crash with, with uh, Richie Valens and the big bopper and... So he had to go to his mom's and tell her, and, and this is the most saddest part, too. <clears throat> Buddy Holly, who was only 22 years old at the time, was married, just got married, like, six months prior. So, uh, his wife, Maria Elena, was pregnant with their child. And because of his passing, just uh, because of his passing, she actually had a miscarriage. And I feel so bad for her, you know, like. And today, like I said, is the day that the last time they performed. Tomorrow morning, or tomorrow will be the actual day the music died, because technically, because it happened on uh, February 3rd. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think later I'm going to watch stuff about it. Hayward. 
All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit the like button and subscribe button. Leave comments down below. And as always, happy shaving.